My Sterling single, making the pipe fittings for the water distribution panel at the rear of the engine. I showed the making of the full length brass panel in a previous episode. In this clip I'm marking out the panel, which I've painted with marking out blue, and I've figured out the spacings for the water fittings, so I'm just scratching them into the marking out blue. I need to make four flexible pipe fittings and one pressure fitting. But first of all, I need to drill the holes that the fittings are going to go through. This full length rear panel is held in place by just two countersunk bolts. I reused the original hole positions in the drag beam. Over now to the drilling machine and I'm just spotting the positions on the lines using a centre drill. I don't usually hold pieces of metal in my hands when I'm drilling them, but for spotting like this using a centre drill it's not a problem. Once I start to drill the full size holes which are 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, I clamp the brass bar in my cross vise, it's safer that way. Because the cross vise is mounted on the drilling table and the drilling table is not aligned with the head, I have to make a slight adjustment to the cross vise as a move to each mark. If I was using my milling machine as a drill, I wouldn't even have to mark it out. I could just use the vernier on the hand wheels. Either way, the holes are now drilled in the correct position. I've cleaned off all the marking out blue on the linen shirt and it's looking good. Now I need to make four identical water couplings. I'm starting off with a piece of brass hexagon in the chuck. I intend to machine the brass hexagon bar down to 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter for a distance of 7 eighths of an inch. And you can see here that I keep checking it with a ruler. And here I am about to arrive at the magic figure of 7 eighths of an inch. Time now to machine this part to a 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And after a couple of tests with the micrometer I can go all the way down. The finish on this piece is not very good and as you can see the hexagon part is a bit raggy. That's because the tool is blunt. After I've made this one I'm going to change the tip. And that will make a big difference. Carbide tips are easily damaged, particularly if you're machining harder metals. The job so far. This piece of hexagon brass bar has been turned down to 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter for a full distance of 7 eighths of an inch. Now I need to reduce the bar's diameter down to a quarter of an inch. And it will be a quarter of an inch in diameter most of the way down. But not all the way down. I need to leave a quarter of an inch for a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch thread for the nut to hold the part in place. This final shallow cut takes it down to a quarter of an inch in diameter and if I hold the ruler up against it, you can see what I mean by a quarter of an inch of 5 sixteenths, followed by the rest of it a quarter of an inch in diameter. This is a water pipe, so I'm rounding the edge for when I press on the silicone rubber tubing. And it wouldn't be a water fitting without a hole down the middle. So first of all, as usual, a centre drill, followed by a twist drill all the way through. The injector water piping is 5 30 seconds of an inch. For the moment I'm going to drill all of the fittings down the middle 5 30 seconds of an inch. And now it's threading time. I'm using my tailstock die holder for this job and I'm cutting the thread by hand and it's 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. I'm not using one of my homemade special die holders for this. I'm using a commercial tailstock die holder because I generally have a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch die permanently fitted to this tailstock die holder. In this clip I'm parting off the completed component from the hexagon bar stock. And this is what it looks like. It's not finished yet, I have to machine this other end. You'll be very pleased to know that I'm not going to show the operation for all four of these parts. This is the second of the fittings being made. I've changed the position of the camera to allow you to get a better look at it. Here's the threading process. As you can see, I'm doing it all by hand, turning the chuck one way and the die holder the other way. You don't normally need to use a lubricant when cutting brass, but this is squeaking a bit. So if this happens, use a drop of oil. It'll make it easier. In this clip you can see that I'm using the first part that I made as a template to show me where to part off the second part. One of these water fittings is different, it's a pressure fitting. This is for the tender hand pump. So this needs to be threaded 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch all the way along the part. I'm just trying a union nut on the end and it fits very well. So now I can continue. The first thing to do is to make a deep centre in the end of it. This will take the union cone. And now I'm drilling down the middle, once again 5 30 seconds of an inch. As before, I'm using the first part that I made as a template to show me where to part off this component. The next part of the job is to reverse the components in the chuck and machine away part of the rear. 
The reason for doing this is that I'm going to be soft soldering the piping to these fittings and the thinner the metal, the less heat I will need. And I'm also making it nut shaped. No one's going to see these fittings because they're at the back of the mounting plate, but that is not the point. I also drilled the holes a bit larger to 3 16 of an inch in diameter on a couple of them, as well as the pressure fitting that will be silver soldered to the pipe. And here is the kit of parts, all looking quite smart. I'm using turned down union nuts as nuts because they look very, very neat indeed. I just had to drill the centres out to quarter of an inch in diameter. I fitted a full set of copper washers to this side of the fitting, and here's the fitting fastened back onto the engine. I may have to swap the position of the pressure fitting and one of the injector feeds, just to align the pressure feed with the tender pipe. More about that later. And that's about it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.